The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, so we're just going to give this just, uh, just about three more minutes before we officially get started here. But thank you. All right, so uh, so once again, good morning and welcome uh, to today's webinar, uh, which will be focused on sharing your on-base solution outside of your corporate corporate walls, uh, where we can take your on-base content anywhere you want to be. So again, welcome. Uh, today's webinar is from the Navient Customer Care Group. Uh, here's a snapshot of the team's composition. And today uh, presenting is myself, Paul Kegler. And then just a couple of admin notes uh, quick before we get started uh, and we dive in. Uh, so the audience, uh, your voice is muted. Uh, the chat box is available to type comments and questions. And um, yeah, the, so there'll be a, like a short uh, survey at the end uh, and then you can access all previous webinars at uh, navian.com slash resources. I'm just uh, checking on the the webinar uh, real quick here just to ensure that that chat uh, box is enabled. Okay, looks good. Okay, so today uh, we're going to be covering uh, some of the platforms and accessibility overview, uh, the key benefits of, of ShareBase, uh, public access viewer, uh, the benefits of incorporating a web server in your environment, uh, and the benefits of uh, on-base mobile, and then really kind of diving into on-base mobile and what that looks like uh, for you know for you yourself or your end users, um, and then some of that architecture and security uh, associated with on-base mobile as well. So there there are several ways to securely break out of your corporate walls and begin in uh, interacting with your crucial business data. So in a manner that, that meets today's demanding and ever-changing uh, business landscape. So ShareBase by Highland is an enterprise cloud-based file sharing product and an ideal extension to your on-base solution. Uh, this allows unlimited sharing of files both inside and outside your organization while maintaining ownership and control of the entire process at the corporate level. For our government attendees, there's Public Access Viewer, which streamlines the administrative processes by offering citizens secure web-based access to public records stored in OnBase. Organizations uh, have the option to leverage Citrix in conjunction with OnBase to virtualize their infrastructure, uh, which would be capable of securing data and applications by delivering virtual resources to users based on location and device-specific security configurations. 
And of course, uh, there's the web server. Uh, so the OnBase web server provides users with a secure web-based access to enterprise uh, data, um, documents, uh, real-time interactions and processes uh, within your business from anywhere and at any time. So web browsers function as a secure internet or intranet clients uh, that connect to a centrally managed OnBase web server. It isn't just uh, for the internal network. So securely on port 443 uh, with a valid certificate, you can share OnBase content to the internet, including DocPop links. And so for OnBase mobile users, uh, there's no need to direct your users to so, you know, some other store to download the mobile application. Each platform has its own you know, mobile app store. And so with iOS devices, iPhones and iPads, uh, they can access the OnBase mobile apps uh, right from the Apple store. Uh, same goes for Android uh, devices, your phones and tablets, get it right from Google Play. And the same is for the, uh, the Windows Store as well. And so really any of these uh, accessibility modules uh, that I just touched on briefly could, you know, could be a webinar in and of themselves. So for today, I'll be looking at the key benefits of each and then going more in depth on mobile. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can extend your OnBase solution with ShareBase, which allows you to share content managed in OnBase with individuals both inside and outside your organization. So with ShareBase, you can retain control of your documents. Uh, ShareBase uses corporate email addresses to create user accounts, ensuring uh, your organization retains ownership of any shared information. Administrators can also tightly control who uses the product and determine which users uh, have the ability to share externally. So when users manually share documents, they can assign rights and permissions at the folder level or even all the way down to the individual document. So when users leave your organization or change roles, um, rights can easily be revoked by your admins or transferred, which mitigates the risk of unauthorized access and ensures continuity during transition of personnel. ShareBase also provides an audit trail uh, allowing you to see exactly what content is being shared and accessed by whom. So the two key features or main points of ShareBase is the sending and receiving. So with sending, you can automatically share OnBase content with external contributors and, and reviewers uh, with appropriate permissions. Uh, so in conjunction with a, with a workflow process you already use today, you can seamlessly extend that content outside of your organization providing external access to individual documents or a complete folder of documents. And then you can monitor uh, who views or the activity surrounding the documents uh, or the folder uh, within ShareBase. And so on the, the flip side of that is receiving. So ShareBase allows you to capture content from those uh, outside of your organization. Uh, so they no longer you know, have to involve you know, emailing in or USBs or SFTPs or physical mail. Uh, external contributors can add content to a designated ShareBase folder, and OnBase can be configured to monitor that folder, automatically ingesting new content directly into an OnBase process. So ShareBase makes it simple and intuitive for all contributors to upload content from a desktop or mobile device using the web browser. And the ShareBase app can be downloaded uh, from your device's app store as well, allowing it to uh, really just, you know, take your content anywhere. And so quickly, I wanted to show you uh, what this can look like. Oops, we'll go back and I'll go back to my little video there. Here we go. And there. All right. So I wanted to show you what this can look like, um, you know, within uh, the web version here. Uh, so this is uh, this is how you know our team uh, at the customer care group uh, leverages ShareBase. Uh, you know we can uh, we can share out those install uh, files right to those customers. Um, you can see you know we click on this icon and we can uh, create a new folder, and then so you have the ability to sort in here you know by name or date, um, and so we can just navigate to that May webinar folder we just created, and so there's a real simple drag and drop functionality as far as adding documents to this ShareBase location. So now we can see that that document's there. And so let's go ahead and share that content. Um, so we can choose uh, the, the rights uh, that this link is going to grant access to, whether it be upload only or download only or both. Uh, we can set an expiration date for that link. 
Um, and then you also have the ability to add some additional security uh, to these links that you're sharing as well, whether to email a secure password or just to, you know, set up your own password. And then, of course, uh, you have the option to email that link out. So to that identified personnel. So let's just, uh, you know, I just made this myself. So once we go ahead and we actually um, create that link, So that link's been created, and if we select uh, View Links, we can get into some of that admin that I mentioned. Uh, you have the ability to see all the users that this link has been shared with. Uh, you know, the ability to copy that uh, that link uh, back to your clipboard for easy access, and then of course, you know, the you know, the ability to to kind of re-email that out or address more people that you want to share that link with. So with Public Access Viewer. Government agencies can meet Freedom of Information Act and other regulations while ensuring constituents only retrieve documents and records that are suitable for public access. Providing convenient self-service capabilities, organizations can significantly reduce time handling uh, requests for information uh, to include court orders or zoning applications and permits. And so here's an example of what a configured public access viewer can look like. You know, you'd be able to, you know, customize this page, put your own uh, municipality's logo up there at the top. Uh, here we can see one of the documents uh, set to be shared to the public, and we can select on it. And so your your citizens, you know, for those publicly, you know, access available documents, be able to go in here, search by document type, you know, put in you know, those search parameters. So let's just make this one pretty broad so we get a pretty big uh, res result in the hit list here. And we can go ahead and we can, you know, we can view that uh, that construction document. You know, so very convenient to make all of those, you know, required documents that may need to be shared uh, with the public uh, available and out there. So we have several customers uh, that are leveraging this uh, and quite successfully. So the OnBase web server not only allows you to share your content to your employees outside of your corporate walls, but can improve the ways that your organization does business with public customers. So some of the benefits of a web server uh, include uh, remote and public access for consumers, remote employees, and business partners via standard internet browsers. The web server also allows, allows for um, centralized administration so server, which is server-based as opposed to client-based, meaning that an organization can leverage a web server within their intranet to host on-base access for their employees. And then when it comes time for an upgrade, you would only need to upgrade the web server and all of the users that connect to the server via their browsers will just adjust accordingly. The web server also allows for customization because uh, there's uh, support uh, built in for those standard development technologies. And of course, there's that ease of access because you know we're we're leveraging those browsers that your your end users are already familiar with, and uh, it also allows for some personalization with some easily accomplished point-and-click uh, configurable interfaces. So some of the key features of a web server is the deployment flexibility. So with a scalable architecture and and two client versions available, a, a feature-rich um, ActiveX client uh, for Windows Internet Explorer and a cross-browser zero footprint HTML client as well. Um, so with the web server, you can leverage uh, doc pop, folder pop, PDF pop, form pop. Uh, and so really what these are, they're, they're rapid development tools uh, for point and click generation of secure URLs that allows administrators to provide access to on-base content from any existing corporate intranet, extranet, or internet sites. So here's an example of what a web client uh, for OnBase 17 uh, looks like. Uh, so your employees from outside of your corporate network and domain can navigate to that HTTPS browser, input their credentials, and have access to all of those same business processes that they're used to seeing. And an example of what uh, my favorite module reporting dashboards uh, would look like within the web client as well. All right, so let's get into the benefits of mobile and, and to really the, the meat of this webinar here where we're gonna dive into mobile. So 
you know, as we're aware, uh, mobile technology is accelerating uh, the speed of business and really shifting the competitive landscape by, <clears throat> by leveraging OnBase Mobile you can transform your existing solution and open the doors to new and exciting possibilities. Uh, you can provide your employees with easy access to on-base documents and processes at their convenience, whether they're in the office or on the go. So mobile devices have really become uh, ubiquitous over the past few years. The bring your own device trend is one catalyst for this growth. Employees are clamoring to connect their smartphones and tablets to the corporate network, so they can access email, documents, and other corporate information while on the go. So with incorporating OnBase Mobile into your solution, uh, this easily allows you to decrease overall processing time while increasing productivity by keeping OnBase at the decision maker's fingertips. So you can make your content available to the people who need it wherever they are, even offline, from almost any device or application. So let's highlight some of the key functionality of integrating your on-base solution with mobile. So with mobile, uh, you have the ability to you know, search and retrieve documents via custom queries, add and edit notes, uh, browse workflow queues, perform user tasks within those queues. Um, you can take advantage of uh, eForms and Unity Forms, uh, which will automatically resize to fit the form factor of the particular mobile device you're using. Uh, you can upload documents from your device's camera, assign it to a document type, index keywords onto that document, and ingest it into OnPace. Um, you also have the ability to create and submit uh, eForms and Unity Forms. And on iPads, you even have access to my favorite module, Reporting Dashboards. Um, also, your geolocation information can be captured in OnBase along with a Unity Form from the iPad or Windows tablet. So this is an excellent tool for insurance adjusters who are completing a claim information or for field service reps. So also with iPads, you have that ability to, to work offline. So OnBase mobile apps have offline capabilities built in. Uh, users continue to work and be productive even when they have no network connection. So OnBase automatically pushes content to a mobile briefcase. So users have all the content that they need on their device so they can review, update, create documents, fill out forms, upload photos, all while offline. And then when a network connection is reestablished, changes are automatically synced with the OnBase server. So these, uh, these feature, feature matrices uh, that I've been showing you can be found in any of the mobile access MRGs or module reference guides, uh, which can be found on Highland Community or you can reach out to support and we can give you you know, any of the kind of information that you're looking for. All right, so let's take a look at what this can look like on a mobile device in regard to custom queries. So the ability to search and retrieve documents through the use of custom queries. So once you, um, so once you log on, uh, you'll be presented with a screen similar to, to this one here. Uh, this specifically is the interface that was designed for mobile use on, on Android powered devices. So we can go ahead and select custom queries, and you can access all of the custom queries that have been set for use with mobile, which is just a simple checkbox in, in the configuration module, and that your user account would normally have access to. So on-base security still applies here. Because your users will log on with their, uh, their user accounts, the same security applies to their accounts, dictating what they can and cannot interact with within your environment. So let's select one of these queries. Uh, you can then search your documents based on the parameters configured for this custom query. Uh, this one is set for um, a date range or specific keywords. So again, um, this interface uh, will look and feel a little bit differently depending on the platform you're using. So when I selected date range on my Android device, because this was specifically designed with that operating system in mind, it leverages that, that native functionality. So when I'm using my Android device for other activities, when I select a date picker, this is you know, what I normally see and this is what I'm normally presented with. So let's go ahead and put a date in there. I put May 6th because uh, that's my wedding anniversary. And we can select OK and select Search. And here we're presented with a hit list of all the documents that meet the user identified parameters. 
So in this case, that'd be all the AP invoice uh, documents that my user account would have access to that have been uploaded since May 6. So let's, uh, let's select one of these invoices. And so once selected, you can then interface with that document's metadata. Uh, here we can see all the keywords assigned, with it, uh, assigned to this document. So we can, um, we can also select notes, and we can view all the notes associated with this document. We can even add a note if we want to. And what's really nice about only interfacing with the document's metadata at this point is that we haven't actually downloaded the document yet, making it a lot less labor intensive for your mobile device's network. So speaking of downloading the device, or the document, um, in the upper ribbon menu here, uh, you can see this icon. And once selected, it allows us to download an image of the captured document. So when you download an image of, uh, of the document, you can then view and zoom in on that document with your device's native pinch and zoom features. So, you know, as, as we're really all aware, especially, you know, those of us that, that leverage workflow, you know, workflow is what drives your business process. So it really makes it vital to have OnBase at your fingertips. So when an item hits a manager or executive's queue, they are notified that something requires their attention and they're able to take action on that item conveniently right from their mobile device. All right, so let's take a look at uh, workflow. So, um, so we can go ahead and just select workflow. And so now we're presented with all the workflow queues that my user account has access to. Uh, we can go ahead and expand out this first queue here because it looks like I have 13 items that need my attention. And so we can just start at the top and select this first item in the queue. And just like before, uh, we're able to interact with that item's metadata. Uh, we, could, you know, we could view those notes, uh, but we can also select uh, related items to view any other documents that are associated with this item. So here, uh, you know, we could be viewing, you know, receipts for an expense reimbursement to make sure they have been included uh, with that uh, and so on. And at the top again, uh, we have that same icon that we now know is what we can use to download an image of, of the captured item. But now there's that new icon up there, that, that clipboard with some check boxes there. And so when we select that, um, we're then presented with all of the ad hoc tasks that I would normally have access to within that queue. So those actions that I'm going to be taking on those items in my workflow queue, I, you know, I get a notification on my phone, I get in there, I check it out. And so, you know, right from the golf course, you can manage any of the items within your workflow queue, you know, approve PTS, uh, PTO requests, uh, supply requests, uh, sign off on a time sensitive purchase order, or any of the other numerous ways that your organization is currently leveraging workflow. So the same ease of access applies to creating e-forms or Unity forms that once submitted will go right into your solution. So most organizations have these forms as a, as a trigger document that would initiate a workflow process or other business process, such as a PTO request or expense reimbursement or a, or a claims form uh, from a field representative. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like uh, on mobile just real quick. Um, so we can select a new form. Um, so uh, you're, you know, you'll be presented, you know, with all the the Unity forms or eForms that your user account would normally have access to. And then so we can uh, we can just go ahead and select one of those forms. And then you know you fill out those applicable keyword values, and then just select submit. And as easy as that, you just submitted a a new Unity form, and it's in your OnBase solution. And it, you know, if it was tied to a workflow process, it just kicked that process off and you did it all right from your phone. So another excellent mobile capability that I wanted to cover today is the ability to upload new documents uh, right from your preferred device. So once we, uh, once we select upload, you can see that we're now presented with the option to upload an image uh, that's already stored in our device as a new document type within our solution. And then there's this extremely handy feature, the ability to leverage your device's camera to snap a quick photo of a document or receipt and then upload it within your environment. So real quick here, we can select uh, take a photo. 
and then we snap a quick picture of that document and we um, you know we can assign it to an applicable document type uh, so once we select the document type that we want that to be associated with uh, we're presented with all the keywords assigned to that document type you know so then we you know we just enter in that the keyword information so we, we index that document and then we just go ahead and select upload so then right from your phone you know you just you took a picture of your receipt uh, or, or an invoice and you assigned it a document type we indexed uh, those those keywords in there and then we uploaded it and now it's in your solution and so on kind of the, the same note of, of image capture as far as mobile devices is concerned uh, when you're leveraging iPad uh, you also have the ability to perform some some image enhancement as well you know you can adjust the the quality you can rotate the image edit crop adjust color and brightness and just really you know get that to to where you need it to be um, especially if your organization is leveraging some sort of optical uh, character recognition uh, software that needs to be able to to read that document so what does OnBase Mobile look like, you know, within your network? You know, what, is, what does that architecture look like? And so Highlands Mobile architecture includes three main components. There's the mobile device, which is running an OnBase Mobile application. And then there's the mobile broker server and the application server, which then, of course, you know, reaches out and communicates to that database or file server. So in contrast to a desktop application, such as the Unity client, all communication uh, from the mobile client is through that mobile broker server. So by utilizing the mobile broker server, we gain the following advantages from a security perspective. So you get that, that network segregation. So the ability to limit exposure to the on-base core by exposing only the mobile broker server in a less protected network zone, such as a DMZ or demilitarized zone. Um, Mobile Broker Server also allows you to uh, leverage uh, some enhanced authentication, uh, such as the ability to implement, uh, you know, like a more enhanced authentication, such as like a two-factor authentication um, with device registration. Um, there's also some session isolation that's built in here. So the session established with the mobile broker cannot be used for servicing requests directly to the application server. And so um, on that same note, data returned from the application server to the mobile broker is never cached. Uh, so this really limits that risk of, of data loss if the mobile broker were to ever be compromised. And so, um, so you know, I just mentioned that device authentication. And so when you're, when you're utilizing device registration uh, for that additional security, um, you're incorporating your Active Directory or your LDAP server for authentication and an email server to push out the, you know, those registration emails that, you know, we're all familiar with as far as, you know, getting registered, you know, on, on certain platforms. And so this enables you to leverage two-factor authentication. And so two-factor authentication is, is a method of authenticating an entity by multiple factors. So traditionally, users are accustomed to single-factor, uh, which would be where they just enter a, a username and password, which is, you know, that's something that you know. That's one factor uh, to access resources such as, you know, an email account. Whereas two-factor authentication requires that, you know, that additional factor uh, to authenticate the user. So it's usually, um, like, in combination with their username and password, they would provide something that they have. And so in this case, uh, what they have is going to be that device token that is generated during this device registration process. And so really what that looks like, um, so you have your end users, and they're attempting to log on and register their mobile device. And so when that happens, a notification will get pushed out to the identified personnel within your organization. So whether that be you know, your on-base admins or your IT staff, whoever you want managing uh, your mobile uh, you know, presence, um, and so the end users, you know, they will not be able to access um, until that identified personnel within your organization accept that device, which will then um, get assigned a device account. And so with those kind of device accounts in there, um, it's with, if a mobile device, you know, ever gets lost or stolen, administrators can then disable that device, um, 
the device account just like they would, you know, disable a user account in Active Directory. So, you know, really kind of providing more of that that control over, of, you know, what's going on as far as your data and its mobile access to it. And so as an additional security measure, um, there are integration capabilities uh, with separate, you know, mobile device management solutions uh, that can be used um, to provide administrators with, you know, more control over mobile devices to help ensure, you know, the safety of sensitive data. Um, so, you know, that would that would include things like, you know, remote wipe, uh, remote lock, remotely track, or you know, delete all that data from that device if it's lost or stolen. All right, so. I, um, so I really save kind of the best for last when it comes to mobile. Um, so you can, you know, right now, after this webinar, you know, you can grab your device, navigate out to your app store, search for OnBase, and download the mobile application. So there's a demo already set up. So you can get your hands on this and you can see how it would look and feel on, on you know, on your phone, on your tablet, you know, what that could look like. So you simply, you know, you just download the app, and you select the settings, um, no box, it'll be the only box there, and you just configure the client to point at this shown uh, URL here. And then you choose you know, one of these usernames uh, with a password of OnBase, and you're good to go. And you can start getting in there, and you can start seeing what OnBase Mobile would look like on, you know, on, your, you know, on your personal tablet or, or your work phone, and kind of the look and feel and, and what's you know, just how, how great, you know, that, that can be and, you know, how it might work for you and your organization. And so I, I know I covered, you know, quite a bit, bit there as far as, you know, at a high level, all these different types of access modules that can be used to, to really, you know, to take your on-base content anywhere. So let's, let's just recap real quick. So we covered uh, ShareBase uh, and, and what that could look like. Um, for both sending and receiving content. Uh, so ShareBase has that ability to easily administer uh, those links uh, that are being shared out. And then there's Public Access Viewer for our government agencies, um, which greatly reduces that administrative time in handling information requests and making documents available to your citizens. Uh, if your organization is already using Citrix, on-base content can extend to remote locations, providing access to all corners of the internet. And the web server giving you the power to leverage the web client version of OnBase and be easily uh, able to manage and administer uh, the publishing of DocPop and UnityPop links out to the public. And of course, we covered all the functionality with OnBase Mobile. So uh, that being said, uh, I have the box open here. Uh, so yeah, so are there kind of any questions or anything we covered or any, you know, any kind of additional information that anyone would like to have sent out to them? All right. Um, well, of course, you know, if you, if you think of anything, you can always reach out to, to support the support team and myself or, you know, someone else on the team will be able to, you know, get you the information that you need, you know, especially, you know, if, you know, if you need that URL to be able to leverage that on base mobile app and, and things of that nature. So on the horizon, uh, on base 18, the candidate release is, is here. It's out. Um, so that, you know, that's exciting. Uh, there's some definitely some new features there as well. And then the updated versions of this, uh, these other softwares as well. And so the next uh, customer care group webinar is going to be in July. And the, uh, the Navient Summit this year is uh, October 15th and 16th at the Monona Terrace in Madison. And of course, thank you. Thank you for attending. Oh, yeah, of course. All right. Um, yeah, so I have a request to send out some information on uh, the firewall and, and safety, so I will. I can certainly do that. Is there any other questions before we end today's webinar? 
All right. So with that, thank you for your time. Thank you, you know, for your, your attendance and everything. And uh, I give you guys another 25 minutes back in your day here. So enjoy the rest of your days.